been excited. I've been excited for this call because I wanted to chat with you girls and I wanted to just go there on today's episode because we are in the times right now. Like everybody just, we just got out of yesterday, the day before this energy of, so we're airing this guys on basically November 9th, which November 8th, 302, we had this full moon lunar eclipse. And I have been always really fascinated by astrology. I don't actually really understand it, but I do recognize there's some ancient civilizations that I really adore, like the Mayans, the Aztecas, who really use this in, um, in their lineage and to really help them navigate um, really powerful things. So can I ask you, can we just go for it? What is happening right now? Like, let's go there. What's happening on a collective level? And then we'll talk about individuals. But what are you guys, what are you guys seeing? <laughs> definitely in the Aquarian age. And we're calling this the Aquarian decade. So, you know, Aquar we started off the decade with uh, some outer planets that move very slowly through the Zodiac, entering Aquarius, the sign of progress, the sign of sudden change, the sign of community and collectivism. So we started with Jupiter and Saturn, and then next year, Pluto, which, uh, takes about 20 years to go through each sign is returning to Aquarius um, for the first time in 1798. So yeah. yeah. 1798. Yes. Wow. Okay. That's big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are big, you know, the planets, especially the ones like Jupiter and beyond Pluto, they move slower through the sky. So they influence larger trends when they move through each sign. So when the, as they're moving through Aquarius, we're all kind of being pulled and affected to, you know, embrace progress, embrace technology, but also not forget those core values of togetherness and community. So Aquarius is this interesting sign that is both individualistic and also collaborative at the same time. And so we're really kind of having that, we're seeing that fight go on with people, me, me, mine, mine, my way, but then, okay, wait, we have to work together for the survival of the planet. And I don't think we've figured it out yet at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Let me ask, what are some of the emotions that people are probably feeling around this time and maybe even leading up to this time? And by the time this podcast airs, which is not going to be much, we're putting you guys kind of first on this because I really <laughs> want people to know what's really, what's normal to be feeling right now. And because and mm -hmm. I, I realized yesterday I was coaching some clients and they really work on their anxiety and they work on just being positive. And she was like, I've been beating myself up for the last three weeks because I haven't felt like I feel anxiety. I feel this disruption inside of myself and I'm not sure why. And I'm kind of <laughs> losing it. And then I have shame and I'm like, ah, I think we need to like talk about this because the last yes. thing we need is feel shame for this anxiety we're feeling. So I would love for you guys yeah, to speak absolutely. on that for a minute. Yeah. Well, we are smack in the middle of eclipse season right now. And eclipses are events uh, that happen with the moon and the sun and the earth that disrupt everything. So, emo you know, the moon rules our emotions. So emotions really go wild and you feel really out of control because you are. I mean, we always are, but we're especially out of control. <laughs> so, you know, many people have come to define like positivity as they're controlling what they can within their universe. And even that will start to feel out of your you know, out of your command when it's eclipses, because you're supposed to surrender. So all these feelings of guilt and shame and anxiety and everything, like, I understand why people have them, but, you know, this is something bigger than you. So there's nothing to feel ashamed about. That's like saying you can control, you know, the, the spinning of the planets. And if you didn't do a good enough job at that, you're a loser. You know, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense to beat yourself up for a phenomenon yeah. that even you think, you know, when you think about what an eclipse actually is, you're seeing the shadow of the earth on the moon or the sun is getting blocked out by the moon. So it's actually a really important time for doing shadow work. And so I'm not surprised that a lot of your clients are, are if they are feeling some of those emotions that they think they've worked so hard to overcome. And, you know, the, mm -hmm. 
as astrologers, we kind of look at all of the different planets the way like a family systems therapist would look at the different parts of your personality. You know, you're always going to have a planet like Venus, which wants everything to be beautiful and bright or Jupiter, which is like wants to see the abundance. But then you have to deal with Saturn, which is a planet of restrictions and boundaries or Pluto, which is your shadow. So rather than, you know, trying to, um, you know, disassociate from certain planetary parts of yourself. I'm sure you work with people all the time to kind of do more of the integration, right? And this is a time for that, for sure. Time for integration, integration of all the different emotions, all the different um, right. ebbs and flows. Like you said with Aquarius, it's like you have this feeling of like my, mind, mind, my way, but then we're also like, well, it can't be my way because we're also supposed to collaborate. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like this like kind of polarity, which is really interesting right now. So yeah. what would be your advice for, um, well, I actually am facing my shadows. It's wild. I, I don't deal with anxiety and I'm going to be so vulnerable. I last night in the middle of the night woke up with such depilitating anxiety. I felt like I was going to be sick today. I was like, Oh my gosh, I have this big event this weekend. I was that sick. And it was wow. cause of anxiety. And I was like, is this mine? Like, what do I need to look at? But then I was like, is this the collective? I don't normally deal with anxiety. And I thought it was weird that it came out of nowhere. And it wasn't like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. when spirit's trying to talk to you. This is like smack dab mm -hmm. midnight. Like, I'm like, what is yeah. going on? And so what can sign you, are you, by the way? I, well, okay. I had actually my first, as a gift, my astrology reading uh, mm -hmm. on my birthday in December. So I'm a Sagittarius. Oh my gosh. But it was really interesting because they said I had Gemini and I knew nothing about Gemini. And, you know, I was learning a little bit, but it made complete sense to me. And I was like, this is <laughs> legit. Like, Wow, mm -hmm. this is wild. And it makes sense. Like we menstruate with the moon. We um we feel these emotions when these things are happening on the planetary level. So it's like, why don't we get wise and like link up with it and really learn how to um navigate with it? Yeah. Well, so the what funny your... thing is it's affecting you whether you are conscious of it totally. or not. And that's why it's kind of like, you know, what is this stuff I'm breathing? Air. Maybe I should think about the air quality around me. You know, it's sort of like, <laughs> yes, you should. You'll probably breathe better if you do. So it's kind of similar to that. Like wow. you'll breathe either way because you know to do that. But hmm, how much more power would you have if you knew what you were breathing in? Wow. And if you knew what your signs were, if you really knew um, what's going on on a, on a level for your soul evolution. So can you give me some broad advice? I know everybody has a little bit of um, their own flavor, I imagine, to these times and, and where they're at with their sign. But is there a generic message that you want to give to the world right now as they're navigating another eclipse coming and then also just this age we're in? And luckily, the eclipse just passed on election day on November 8th. So <laughs> done with the eclipses for this year. Yeah. But we're finishing up. We're right in the middle of this two-year eclipse series. And they have eclipses happen in two polar opposite signs. And so the, the and they last for about two years, 18 months to two years, hitting this axis. And they really will show where we're being pulled and stretched in two directions from 2020, mid-2020 to the beginning of 2022. They were in Gemini and Sagittarius, which was the media and truth. And, you know, Whoa, we just media and truth. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're in Taurus. Yeah. And for the last year, they've been in Taurus and Scorpio, which rules reproduction and money, money and all of our supply chain, our regen. I know, isn't it great? So like, so wow. we track these cycles. Actually, the last time we had this cycle was in 2012 when we were all, you know, you mentioned the Mayans while well, we were kind of like, what yeah. is going to happen? We're all kind of wondering where the world was going. And so this is something, you know, we've, we've been here before we get through these times, but really there's always going to be a very critical focus. And so next year we just, I don't, we write about this in our book every year and we're just sending it off to print our 2023 horoscope guide. I know. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, so we've been thinking about this a lot next year. Um, the nodes middle of the year on July 17th, 
they'll move from Taurus and Scorpio to Libra and Aries. So we're going to, our, our, we're going to focus on, it's kind of the war and peace signs. Libra is peace. Aries is war. Libra is about relationships and marriage and Aries is about autonomy. So I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting. Self and others balancing that all out. So. Wow. So we're moving now. We just moved from truth media. Mm -hmm. So true. So true, guys. I mean, how much did the media play into our reality these last two years? I mean, I oh saw it on a whole f different level. So that was interesting. And now we're moving into yeah. this idea around money and economy. And you guys, mm -hmm. if it, we got to be aware of these things, because this, this might be metaphysical to someone listening, but even someone, my friends that are in this, uh, economy space are saying, okay, we're heading into a recession. Like how you spend your money is important to look at. You cannot just spend the way you were spending. And it doesn't mean you have to have a limited mindset, but you need to be smart. And I think it's interesting. We're heading into that right now, right? You're saying we're heading into that. We're in the middle of it. For we're in the middle year. of it. And, and I, there's always a lesson at the end of it. And it doesn't always happen right at the end. We're still like looking at all these media shakeups, like, okay. But I think you know, on a deeper level, like Taurus is an earth sign, you know, and Scorpio is a water sign, like all these things that we think we need and the material energy that we've brought, like what would happen if we, where's our enough? What do we need all these things? So I think it's also quite overall, like looking at our values and how they connect to our spirituality and the earth. Wow. So when is enough enough? I think that's a message to journal on right now. When is enough enough? And then as we head into July 17th with the relationships, which by the way, you guys just said my, they said my North and South node. Is that right? Is yeah. Aries and Libra. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what does that mean for me coming up in July? <laughs> oh, be interesting. You are probably having a North Node opposition, I would imagine. So you're going to, it'll reconfigure the balance of your relationship to others and yourself. How much time do you need for you? How much to a relationship? If you're in a relationship, you may find that you need to reprioritize for yourself. So, mm, Yeah. Cool. Love We're that. We're Sagittarians too, by the way. We're December yeah. 2nd. Yeah. When are you? December 13th. No way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of cool. cool. Yeah. What, is, yeah. what do you have Swift. to, what do you have to say in general generality for a Sagittarius? I mean, obviously there's so much that plays into it, but. Well, we are supposed to be the motivational speakers and metaphysical mavens of the Zodiac, interested in sharing wisdom and big ideas and optimism and possibilities, personal growth, all the stuff you do. <laughs> all the things we're doing. <laughs> Coaching people, you know, just getting them to see things in an oh, empowered that's... way. Ah, oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. Okay. Why, what made you guys get into this? And why are you so passionate about astrology? And what do you what do you really want for people to get since this is your sign? You want to be a teacher. You yeah. want to motivate. Why? You know, we've always loved personality tests like Myers-Briggs and Enneagram and all that. But they're kind of arbitrary. You're like, I think I'm a seven or an ENFP. <laughs> but with your birth chart, it's like you are what you are. So it gives you that map without that guesswork. And it just is so insanely true like my college boyfriend gave me a chart as a gift i was just getting curious we were about astrology so oh, this is so true we'd read about sagittarius be like yeah that is kind of me but then he did our whole birth chart which you can actually do those on our website for free i can you know give you the link for that but it's uh, on astrostyle.com slash birth chart you need okay. your time date and place of birth and um, cool. You plug it in and it gives you the map of where all the planets were in relation to the earth at your moment of birth. So it's kind of like a screenshot of the sky and it's like the instruction manual to yourself, the users. It doesn't mean that you don't have free will. You actually have a lot of, a lot more, the more you understand it. It's like, you know, but it is this cosmic code that we're all born with. What did your soul come in to learn? What, wow. did you, what strengths did you bring in from past lifetimes? Where is the area of growth and opportunity? Where might you struggle? 
um, in a good way, because sometimes we have to struggle in order to grow and where might you kind of be your own worst enemy. So we, we fell in love with it because as Sages, we are up to big things. We don't, you know, you got to be really efficient with time if you want to live life to the fullest. So it really helped <laughs> us. Decisions. They say the average adult makes 35,000 decisions a day. And I think like a couple Whoa. thousand of them all are right. food alone. So with all that, no wonder we're anxious and exhausted and overwhelmed and that kind of thing. So anything that can help you make faster, better decisions that resonate in your gut, in your soul uh, as correct, which I always find astrology did, I'm, I'm open to. So that's why we love it. That's why I love it. Oh, that's really cool. That's really powerful, actually. Like your cosmic code. How cool mm -hmm. is that? Well, your yeah. yeah. We found out that we had from that chart, which of course I was like, let me read it, Ophi, because, you know, we're born four minutes apart. So the, our charts are basically the same tiny difference. But, you know, um, honestly, it was like the most eye-opening thing to discover that we had Moon, Mercury, Mars, and Venus, they were in the Scorpio part of the sky when we were born. So, you know, we always felt very Sagittarian and that we love to travel and take on big ideas, but then we'd like want to go and just draw for hours or write. I mean, we really can focus, which is how we managed to write so many horoscopes. So, and it's like understanding that's that inner nature too was very, and I think people really should more more than ever going to need to understand themselves I, unfortunately we are going to be there's going to be a lot more anxiety to come i wish that wasn't the case but i think we're going to have i think what the anxiety the collective anxiety is you know the miss you know we're just not in attunement with natural rhythms anymore the way we need to be i mean or even if we want to be the collective around us, the systems and structures of the world are completely interrupting that. You know, it's so great that we can have technology and I love tech, but you know, like where is that balance? So kind of people learning their their nature based on the stars is like a great way to go back to yourself when you need to find that peace and harmony too. Wow. Okay. I want to go there for a minute because <laughs> this is something that's really hitting me as a mom. And I obviously we're on tech right now and we're grateful for tech and it has its, its purpose, but we, I do feel like as a civilization, we're losing our way and we're losing these like fundamental forms of healing, these fundamental forms of peace and I, it's like no wonder we have anxiety no wonder we have so many things like i speak at these biohacking conferences and i'm not doing any misjustice to them but it's fascinating because i'm like they have all these gadgets for longevity and all these gadgets of like this is going to be the next health hack and i'm like nothing that you have here is better than like a tide pool or just the sun <laughs> right. or putting your feet on the earth every day or just walking in. I'm like, wait a minute, are we forgetting? Like we create these little, little pods to go well, inside exactly, of. And I'm like, yeah. all you have to do is go outside. Like where yeah, we lost we've made our it way. More complicated. Like technology has complexified what it's supposed to simplify. It's very strange. It's decentralized everything, including communities, yet it's brought people together. It's this Dichotomy. giant paradox <laughs> really and so can we let's go there from your perspective around anxiety because like you said you're like ah, eh, you're gonna feel it <laughs> it's coming and is there ways to from your guys's perspective around how do we can we navigate this um very real emotion that's not is, is tough and it can lead from anxiety to possibly depression or these feelings of estrangement yeah. or these feelings of i'm not doing enough um can you offer some wisdom from your perspective of what someone can do sure yeah, think, yeah. do you have i can ophi unless you want to go yeah i mean yeah I, go ahead okay cool <laughs> i think um you know, it really is, if we're going to go to the Aquarian way, it's it's about community, finding people who are just getting in community, getting back to the ability to talk about things without, you know, Aquarius is the least judgmental sign, too. It's kind of this rainbows and unicorns, like 
we're coming out of this Capricorn energy, which is very competitive, very judgmental, very hard on ourselves, very, I want to be the best, you know, and uh, moving towards this more like, well, how do I, you know, it's not even about fitting in. It's not about being with this elite crew. It's about like really seeing our forming communities where we can just grow and work together. It's, it's very woo woo and very, you know, 1960s kind of vibe, but that acceptance, <laughs> like breaking out of the, um, it's, a, it's hard because we've all been given these sort of dopamine, um, boosting messages. You need this, you need this, this is bigger, this is better. That's not enough. You got to have this, you know, and you know, like how do we balance that? So it's, it's kind of a puzzle to still work. I think it's going to be one of the biggest puzzles, mental health and, and selfhood yeah. within that we have to solve. I also think it has to do with um, Chiron, which is the healing comet, is an oh, air until 2026. I'm going to go 2018, I think. Um, mm -hmm. 17 or 18. So um, for the first time in 50 years. So it's it's we're going through this collective time where we're actually getting in touch with these very raw emotions designed to help us find our voice. So I feel like anxiety has become a catch-all term for what we describe. We don't know what to do. We don't know whether we should speak up. We don't know whether we should, like, we're, quest we're second guessing ourselves. Is this what I'm seeing? And there's so much kind of collective gaslighting going on, especially since the Gemini Sagittarius nodes disrupted everything with media during the pandemic um, that I think people are just like, am I seeing this accurately or am <laughs> I not? So um, we don't, there's a breakdown in our trust of ourselves. And while we are, and it's also part of that sort of paradox of this time, I like to say that humanity is in the middle of a giant iOS update when that pinwheel, that rainbow pinwheel mm -hmm. spins, like our system is updating collectively, our energetic vibration. So be patient also. It's okay if you don't have the answer. It's okay if you don't know what to do. It's okay if you can't get to a positive place. Just try to get to a neutral place. Wow. You know, people, we are our own biggest blind spot. We can't see ourselves the way others do. It's a strange, bizarre part of the human condition. And, you know, we have to be patient with ourselves for that. The answers wow. aren't always in here in our heads and they're not always out there either. Sometimes we have to wait and Aries where Chiron is, is very impatient. So we're learning to heal issues around impatience and the wow. on demand. Like I want the answer now. I want to feel good now. Don't make me feel bad for one minute or I'm going to give it a name and a drug. Like, <laughs> okay. You don't feel good right now. Wow. I think this was really potent. You guys, when I, when she was describing this, I was like, you know, when your phone does an iOS update and you have to shut it <laughs> off and it shuts off longer than you really want it to, because you're like, oh my gosh, I need my phone because you're so conditioned to it. But what if, if we were to look at ourselves as an iOS update, you do need to shut off and it's okay if you feel shut off and it's okay if you don't have these answers and it's okay if you feel funky because updates do feel funky and sometimes they take yeah. a little longer. Um, so I, I love this cause it's permission. And I yeah. think sometimes we don't give ourselves that permission. We want to figure out why now. And can I, like you said, drug it. And I'm not, you guys, I'm being careful with my words here because obviously sure. there's a place and uh, for all, everything, but just really looking at yourself and going, Hey, can I breathe into this a little bit and give myself some grace before I feel like I have to fix myself all the time or I've got to fix this situation, you know? Absolutely. And, you know, phones are a drug. You know, no judge. If you want to use medication to treat whatever you're going through, no judgment here. Um, so I apologize if it sounded like that. But um, no, no, I don't think it did at all. <laughs> to anyone no. who, you know, if anyone yeah. is that way, it's like we're, we're not here to not doctors so yeah you know do what you need to do to feel balanced and well but you know we, we've been trained not to be patient it's no and I'm, no again no judgment there it's just like when your phone is updating you're like what do i do with myself i need to swipe something i need to look at something i need to look at my screen so it's like we're just we're you know we're animals we're programmed yeah. to want input all the time yeah mm -hmm. 
data centers are so jacked from our phones and technology that we need that instant hit of something. So what also may want to happen a little bit is, and, you know, it's hard, you know, it's been harder to meditate, I think, and do yoga over the last year, I've noticed. I don't know if you're, I think that the Libra Aries nodes will help bring that back. But, mm. you know, like letting that energy kind of finding an outlet for anger is really important. Uh, karaoke is one of ours and not having, not being able to go to that since the pandemic, like just used to- Wait, are you still not going to karaoke or are you guys back? <laughs> no, a private no. room with friends, but yeah. <laughs> I must live in a different world. <laughs> yeah. I'm still, it's, uh, I definitely go to karaoke when I can, but yeah. Yeah, that's your medicine for you just cause you're mm-hmm. building something out. I was just playing pickleball. And I was grunting a lot and yelling a lot. And they were like, whoa, you have a lot to say. And I was like, I think I'm getting it all out in the pickleball it's game. <laughs> well, pickleball is perfect for the, the year for 2022 and part of 23, because Jupiter, which is where we grow, is mostly in Aries, which is a very physical sign. So we really should be getting this energy moving through our bodies. So while, while you are in an iOS update, go outside and run around, work out. I, I know pickleball is having this whole research or surge and not even a resurgence. It's like a thing everywhere. I know. All of a it is, but it's fun. You know, it's yeah. like we, should, we need to play actually as, yeah. you know, there's play and movement and community, all the things that are very healthy for people are in that. Yeah. So your, your own inner wisdom will guide you. Like the thing that mm-hmm. I've learned more than anything as an astrologer is um, somebody once it told me the quote advice is what people ask for when they already know the answer but wish they didn't whoa <laughs> say that again you have to say it loud i that is like quotable that is so good that's not a quote for me someone i learned heard it from someone else but it was that advice is what people ask for when they already know the answer but wish that they didn't wow so, i love yeah. that that's so Isn't dang that good, good? So mostly when we tell people things about what are happening with the stars, they're like, oh, I already kind of felt that. It's Most people are not surprised. They're more mm-hmm. relieved and validated. Like, oh, okay, I was feeling that. And now you made it make sense. You told me, you gave me a why. And yep. so. That's yeah. so powerful. You guys, Kate, I'm learning about you guys. Just it's you're coming on my radar, which has been really fun. You guys are amazing. And I want to say, Keish, they already dropped that they're doing like this year next year astrology guide, which is really powerful. But I did hear that you kind of have a relationship guide, which I find interesting. I do. That I have it right here that. by called Supercouple. Is it is it already out? Is it out now? It is. It is there a way we could do a giveaway to somebody who leads a comment and we pick Absolutely. it out? Yeah. Okay, what do we, what do we want them to comment about? And we will find somebody to send them one of your books. Okay. Um, what their number one true, honest relationship frustration is. Ooh, true, honest relationship frustration is in the comments, you guys, they will give out, it's called super couple. Yes. Yep. Super couple, and I like the cover, by the way. That was kind of cool. But what I liked about this was it was saying, it's not like going to say, oh, who you should be and shouldn't be with. It's like, how do you merge together with who you're with, possibly who you're choosing, (laughs) and understanding one another? And I think that's so beautiful because a lot of times when I hear astrology, it's like, ooh, I better stay away from that sign. And I'm like, actually, if we're all one and we're all here as mirrors, wouldn't we actually just need to learn how to work together if we really choose each other? Absolutely. Yeah, and that we are is, for that. Go ahead. Yeah, Sarah. I mean, you know, this is the dip, you know, not that type of advice. This is so the super couple chart you put in your birthday and another we have a whole calculator and there. it's just oh, it's super oh, couple dot com. And then oh, you get this oh. blended chart and you get to read what your relationship's whole profile is about. Because every relationship has its own mm-hmm. sign and chart. So it's like your son and their son, where they meet in the middle on the zodiac wheel, moon. And so like you can find out what your past life was together. You can find out what your love language is as a couple. And it's not just 
me versus you. It's about us. So this is like the third entity that gets created when you two come together. If you were to meet perfectly in the middle. So it's really so helpful to know. <laughs> wow. Supercouple.com. I'm actually going to do it. And we'll send you a copy too, of course. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> as, as a businesswoman, that's a lot of work. And I say thank you because it's a lot of work to create a site where someone can actually merge those things and to pour into a book is one thing, but then you also created that site. So I just say kudos yeah. to you guys. Thanks for caring enough to help people with that because you. you know it's not an easy feat. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, we love it. And we yeah. actually have a guided audio companion workbook we're putting out on 1111 to go with the book. Just wow. for people who are newer to astrology, so you yeah. can hear our voices talking you through, explaining Perfect. how to use it in a really practical way. You'll find that in the book too, but sometimes you just also need that guide. So this is one of the best tools we've ever, we actually did a reading for Beyonce in 2003 when she first started dating Jay-Z and we did her super couple chart for, with, uh, for her with him and she loved it. She found it fascinating and really helpful and we're not taking credit for the, you know, Roomy Sir and Blue Ivy, but we did, you know, give a little <laughs> encouragement there. And um, it can be super helpful. You know, you're one way with one person, another way with another, and you don't mm -hmm. know why. Well, this explains why. Wow, that's awesome. So you guys have been doing this for a long time and now it's in a format where we all can do it. So thank you for that. Yeah, That's good. amazing. Okay. You guys, I'm going to put all their information in the show notes. Um, I know some, a lot of people that listen to me are going to be really interested in this couple stuff. Um, awesome. cause you know, couples are what cause a lot of us, a lot of stress and, <laughs> and it's also our greatest joy and it's our greatest desire. So it's a beautiful, uh, way to um, really enhance your life and enhance your relationship. So I love that. Thank you guys. Okay. Uh, final question because yes. I try to keep these wrapped up pretty tight. So we went there right away. If you <laughs> know you were speaking to a million people and you could see all their eyes looking at you and all their hearts and where we're, they're at right now on this planet earth, what would be the one thing you wanted to say to them? And I'll let whoever wants to go first say, and then the other person. Okay. I would say that, you know, nature is always cyclical. You know, we've been here before in a different way. We have what we need to adapt to handle it, but we just have to pay attention. Don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to look at your fears now, because that is the only way out of it is through right now. Mm, thank you so much. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Elfie. Okay. I would say it's okay not to know. It's okay to say, I don't know. And to sit with the feelings of that because we don't, you know, we're, like I said, we're in that iOS update and, you know, the more you can say, I don't know, and be curious and ask to be shown wisdom. We are all the leaders who are making this next. We're moving into a new way of living, um, a new kind of energetic grid. And we don't know because we've never been here before. So just allow the answers and your curiosity to show you. You can be a leader helping others get there. So, But you're not mm. going to be able to lead people there based on what you already know. None of us are equipped. We're all students and beginners. Woo. Thank you, you two. Thank you for this amazing <laughs> time together. I appreciate you. And thanks for everyone tuning in. And until next time, love you guys. Bye. Bye.